Do you want to buy a smartphone gimbal but feel stuck because there are tens of choices? For most people, a gimbal needs to be practical to use. That is why in this video, we're going to compare the three most easy to use handy gimbals on the market. The Insta360 Flow will be going up against the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 and the Zhiyun Smooth Q4. We're going to check out everything from the stabilization to the features, as well as general usability and build quality. A special thanks to Insta360 for sending us this gimbal before it was released, and if you want to continue to see content like this, you can drop a like and a sub anytime. Let the facts speak. Starting off with what we think is the most important usage reason of a gimbal, stabilization. Walking in a straight line while holding the gimbal not directly in front of you, but at a difficult angle, we do see DJI's Osmo Mobile 6 struggling slightly, which was something that we didn't expect. The Insta360 Flows footage is flowing pretty smoothly, no pun intended. The video quality also seems to be a bit better with attention to detail. The Zhiyun Smooth Q4 doesn't seem to be that smooth, with jerky movement issues that I don't appreciate, but I would say that it's still decent enough to use for basic shots. It seems Insta360 is off to a good start, as this is a well-known angle to shoot footage with a gimbal, especially if you're chasing those cinematic type action videos. Now we're going to take what is called a reveal shot and see how well the software detects change of scenery. DJI seems fine with a quick reaction. Insta360 shows pretty much the same speed and accuracy. I don't really see any differences with Zhiyun either, so it's safe to say that none of them have issues with recognizing a face when it suddenly comes into view. With that being said, the next one is called Orbit Shots. Pretty self-explanatory, it involves orbiting around whatever you're filming. The Osmo looks pretty stable as you can see from the footage, and there are no unexpected shaking or erratic movements in the video. The flow is also putting up a good performance, with my only issue being the stability having slight inconsistencies when the hand moves too much. The Smooth Q4 is also decent, but I would argue that the stability isn't on the same level as the other two, as you're able to see small vibrations from time to time. How about when there's no face though, like, can they track the back of my head? This is another common angle when shooting videos, as it's like the viewer is following the subject. DJI looks to be having a good time, as the accuracy of tracking seems good enough for this test, with minor movements occurring from time to time. Insta360 is also having a good, and perhaps even better time, because the footage is really stable, and there is less movement throwing my focus off on the video. Third on the list is Zhiyun, and in my opinion, it also seems to be fine and close to the performance of Insta360. I do eventually turn around though, to show what real tracking looks like. No big issues with the Osmo whatsoever, though this is kind of an easier straight road that we're walking, so keep that in mind. The flow is pretty much the same, as the footage is stable and clean with slight off-target movements like on the Osmo, but these are minimal as the gimbals have impressed so far. The Smooth Q4 is also quite stable and managed to show a good performance just like the other two. All in all, tracking subjects that will most likely remain in the frame isn't the hardest to do, so for this reason, they all pass with flying colors. This right here is called Hyperlapse. It's basically a sped up and stabilized video, so you can do neat tricks like this. The main issue I have is that there isn't a 4K option for this mode on the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. The same goes for the Zhiyun Smooth Q4, as both of them are only able to record hyperlapse in 1080p, and this specific gimbal also started to randomly track people on the way, which is a minus that we feel should be mentioned. The Insta360 Flow, on the other hand, can shoot hyperlapse in 4K. It does take a while to process, obviously due to the larger file size, but I must say that it's worth the difference in quality, especially if you're going to be editing this footage on a PC later on. So I was talking about how the Smooth Q4 was randomly tracking people during hyperlapse, so let me elaborate on that. What if you're walking down a crowded street or there are just people that are constantly passing through interfering with your footage? Well, with DJI's Osmo, there are a couple of issues. You could be trying to take a TikTok, and some guy could just walk by staring at the camera and steal the attention while you're supposed to be the star of the show. Not cool, man. Zion's gimbal is no different, as the software also allows someone else to just walk by and take control of the tracking software, leaving you to try to shoot your video over and over again. 
This is the part where the Insta360 flow really impressed me, as no matter how much someone walks by, whether it's fast or slow, the tracking remains fixed on you and you can even see the software recognizing that someone is blocking your path. I think that this is pretty important and a noticeable advantage that the flow has over the other two. Another feature we wanted to check out was the tracking while zoomed in. On the Osmo, it doesn't work when you zoom in too much, and it also tells you that the zoom magnification is too large and that you're unable to use active track. You can use this both on the Flow and the Smooth Q4. It's very hard to track without any errors when you're zoomed in, as with both gimbals, you or the subject needs to be really slow for everything to work perfectly. When a problem with the software does occur, the Flow zooms out to keep you in the frame, which is a good save from them because it's a nice feature compared to the tracking shutting off completely. It also zooms back in when it realizes that you're still there. The Smooth Q4 did really well here, but the tracking can fly away when it gets distracted, leaving you to start from scratch. Lastly, we have slow motion tracking. When I say we though, I mean the Insta360 Flow. It's the only gimbal that can utilize tracking in slow motion, so when you're jumping up and down, running around like a maniac, or doing some funny stunts, the software will still be able to track you and then slow everything down which gives you this result you see on the screen. I think that this is also a big advantage that the Flow has because I can think of quite a few uses with this feature, especially if you're doing stuff like skateboarding or playing football. Well, now that we've looked at the different features and use cases these gimbals have, let's check out how easy and practical they are to use, starting off with the DJ Osmo Mobile 6. After the Osmo 3, DJI decided to switch to a magnetic clasp. You stick it onto the back of your phone and voila! You then need to pull the handle of the gimbal upwards and then attach the phone to the tip on which the magnetic clasp fits perfectly. You are then free to turn on the gimbal in which you'll see it taking position and straightening your phone. Insta360 has opted to go with the same style, and I must admit that this is a lot handier than using plastic clasps that come attached to the gimbal. You then promptly rotate the tip of the gimbal upwards, and then proceed to attach the phone with the magnetic clasp onto the appropriate area. Design-wise, I really like the futuristic and clean look of this gimbal, especially the see-through part on the back. Xi'an has a plastic clasp which isn't tied to the price, because it's also the design they prefer on their newest models. It does make it a bit harder to attach the phone, and we don't really recommend trying to do it while you're standing up as you might drop it. There is also a delay when you start up the gimbal, as it doesn't get ready at the same speed as the other two, which to be honest, isn't really that big of a deal, but I think it's a point that some might care about. And before I forget, I'd like to mention that all these gimbals are able to be extended like a selfie stick to get different angles and shots depending on what you want to film. Regarding the quality of the builds, I'm not a big fan of the Smooth Q4. It's definitely not bad, but if you're going to be using this day in and day out, you might prefer something that feels less like a toy. I should mention that it does cost less than the other two though. The tripod system works the same way as the Osmo Action 6, coming as a separate part that you can attach to the bottom. Speaking of DJI's gimbal, it has that premium look and feel that I just mentioned, even though the base material on all of them is plastic. The buttons make the gimbal feel less like a toy, and they're also more pleasant to use. Lastly, the Insta360 Flow has fancy written all over it, and I do feel the need to say this again, I just really like how this gimbal looks, especially the see-through part on the back that houses the battery. It also comes with a tripod that is attached to the gimbal and is really easy to use. Unlike the other two, all you have to do is pull it down and you're all set. You're also able to use the Flow as a power bank, which can come in handy in certain situations, and if you want the spotlight, which is attachable to the gimbal, you can buy the Creator Kit, which is what we have and we're going to describe everything that comes with it shortly. Lastly, here are the contents of each respective device. Coming straight out of the box of the Xi'an Smooth Q4, we have a charging cable, a tripod that is attachable to the gimbal, and the gimbal. These come at a price of around 99 USD, but you can also buy a combo pack which comes with extras like a flashlight, different color gels, and a nice bag for around 129 USD in total. Next up is a DJI Osmo Mobile 6. You get a charging cable, a metal clasp, a tripod, the gimbal, obviously, and a small bag 
bag for the price of 159 USD. You're also able to buy a light if you want, but it will cost you around 49 USD. For the Insta360 Flow, you can buy the gimbal straight up for 159 USD. If you want the creator kit, which I just mentioned that we have, it comes with a strap for the bag, a charging cable for the gimbal, two more cables, lightning and USB-C to use the gimbal as a power bank, the trusty spotlight that I just mentioned a minute ago, the metal clasp, a soft plastic grip for the gimbal if you prefer a different feel, and the gimbal itself along with a small bag. These all together will cost you around 209 USD. In conclusion, the Xiyun Q4 is a decent gimbal, but it has some annoying flaws. If you're a newbie and looking to shoot some basic content, then it could definitely be a good choice. However, if you want the full experience, I would recommend the Insta360 Flow because I personally think the design looks the coolest and you also get more for your money when compared to the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 such as the included flashlight. Well guys and girls, that was our comparison of three of the most small, practical and easiest to use gimbals on the market. Hit those like and sub buttons to keep in touch with our newest content and we'll see you around.